すべてはサッカーならではの躍動感爽快感醍醐味を再現するために絶えず進化を遂げてきた Bonjour les supporters de la Roma. Ciao Roma fans, join. 15 years ago, if someone wanted to play a football based game, video game at a friend's house or whatnot, they would probably tell you, yeah, put best six in. Fast forward 15 years later, if they want to play a football based game, they'll probably tell you, nah, fam, let's go outside and play football. FIFA has been a dominant franchise in the gaming industry. However, That wasn't always the case. Believe it or not, PES was actually the FIFA that FIFA is today. And FIFA was the PES that PES is today. You get me? Basically, PES was the number one football game. Everybody and their mothers owned PES 6. And if you didn't own the game, you're basically made fun of. Kind of like how you're made fun of if you have NBA Live today. Nobody was playing FIFA. Most people were playing PES. And it's crazy to think that today's day and age that PES was a go to game. Unfortunately for PES, they were not able to retain this title as the rival company EA Sports not only changed the gameplay and branded it to a whole new style, they also dominated the marketing area. They did this by getting licenses from, from top clubs and top championships. However, this wasn't the only reason why PES was falling behind. What is up, guys? b r i z e r here, and in this video, I will explain the reasoning of PES's decline and how they've fallen behind FIFA in the popularity race, and as well as how outdated their approach has been as a franchise. And if you think the licensing issues are the reason why FIFA dominated, well, you're in for a surprise. Before we look into the decline of PES, we must understand the dominance the Japanese football game had. Throughout the 90s and early 2000s, everyone was having an attempt to make THE football game. While EA and Konami had FIFA and International Superstar Soccer, which was PES's old name respectively, other companies like Sega had Virtua Striker, Adidas had their own football game, and even Fox Sports was in the mix. However, if you were a football fanatic during this time period, you only had one or the other FIFA or PES. You might have had Virtua Striker or one of David Beckham's endless football games in the background, but your main football game was either PES or FIFA. During the late 90s and early 2000s, it was a tight race between the two. Both PES and FIFA were releasing good football games, and it was really hard to decide which game was the best one. That was until PES 3 came out. PES 3 was revolutionary to the 2000 generation of football gaming, and it leaped ahead of FIFA in the rivalry. Although FIFA 2003 and FIFA 2004 weren't the worst games, FIFA 2002 was really, really bad, and it set FIFA behind PES. PES 3 had changed its engine, and if the graphics look better or worse for you, it's for you to decide. Let me know in the comments down below. I'll leave a picture up here. However, one thing that did improve was the gameplay. It was very easy to pick up, but it wasn't easy to master. The detail that came into this game was insane. The variety of shots you could score with the players was something that the newer PESs could never achieve. The game sold more than a million units. This game was the foundation for the next couple years of PES. PES 3 was followed up by PES 4, that added much needed features such as a better edit mode, some more fully licensed leagues, referees on the pitch, and little details such as dirt in the players' shirts and etc. Gameplay wise, there was slight improvement, but it wasn't too much. But that was because it didn't need to improve. The game did, however, feel like it had more control. It was ahead of its time. PES 4 was followed up by PES 5 and PES 6. Not only were these considered to be the best PES games ever made and the best football games ever made, many considered this title to be one of the best sports games ever made. PES 5 sold more than a million copies in its first day, a world record. Compare that to FIFA 2006, that sold 600k units in its first couple of months. PES 6 also sold really well. The games boasted new features like more preset faces, new positions, more real life immersion, and online that PES 6 included the newly added International Challenge Mode, which basically mimicked the real World Cup qualifying rounds. This was a very innovative feature because it wasn't like any other tournament mode you'd see. When you pick a country, you pick anybody that you feel were good players for the nation, even if they were never capped before. This was a feature that made you feel like an international coach and could even be called an international match league, in my opinion. When it comes to customization, you could put dog heads in the player faces. Pen costumes to replace the jerseys. PES 
had a bridge of fun and realism, with some of those gaps being filled by your imagination. And because of that, fans didn't care about licensing. Konami was on top of the world during this time period and nobody could stop them. Nobody could stop them but themselves. As Pets was at the top during the mid 2000s, FIFA was slowly but surely improving the game. FIFA 06 and FIFA 2006 the World Cup were very disappointing and FIFA 07 was an improvement to both those games. At the time, Pets was still up top, but not until FIFA 08. The gameplay for FIFA 08 was vastly improved and Pets 2008's transition from PS2 to PS3 is not one to remember. PES 2008 had a new graphics engine and it really affected the gameplay. The game felt clunky, there were a lot of glitches, and it felt stiff. International Challenge Mode was completely stripped from the game for some reason. Graphics were improved, yes, but not to its full advantage. The game also lagged and became choppy sometimes. How is that even possible? It's an offline game. The UI just looked more basic and it was not appealing for the fans, especially if they saw how good FIFA was. PES had taken the major fall. EA Sports released a good game in FIFA 08, however, it released an even better game in WIFA Euro 08. Releasing an international based game was an extra chance for a trial for EA Sports. If the gameplay was good, they could implement it to the next FIFA, however, if it wasn't, they could revert to the old gameplay. Unfortunately for PES, the gameplay was incredible. They fixed all the bugs from FIFA 08 and the game felt like a real football simulation. PES 09 had released a couple months after, and although it was a relatively solid game, vastly improved. It didn't reach the heights of arguably one of the best FIFAs ever, FIFA 09. The improved gameplay and the introduction of Ultimate Team was enough to prize the way some PES fans into the FIFA household. This became a recurring theme with FIFA and PES. PES 2010 was a decent game, but FIFA 10 was a better game. PES 2011 was a good game, but FIFA 11 was a fantastic game. PES 2012 was an above average game with a very underrated Master League, but FIFA 12 was a better game. And lastly, PES 2013, which I thought was personally one of the best games ever for PES, outshunned by FIFA 13 which was also one of the best FIFAs of all time. PES was always underdogs of FIFA during the early 2010s and now it is because of FIFA's proper marketing of the game. Ultimate Team being properly marketed as a new genre for games, a mode that many other games have borrowed a concept to make it their own, including PES. Not only that, but the YouTubers that were making this game popular like KSI and the Penthes was a major boost for the Canadian based company. EA Sports had overtaken Konami in the dominance of football games and were leading by a country mile. PES 2014 was almost like the cherry on top for EA Sports. PES was changing its engine from PS3 PES engine to the Fox engine, the same engine that was used in the Metal Gear Solid games. The action shooter game series looked great, and some games even played great, but some not so much. The same problem resurfaced with PES, specifically PES 2014. The transition from PES engine to the Fox engine was one to forget. Although some players like Balotelli and Pirlo looked fantastic, other players like Alexis Sanchez and Luka Modric actually looked like ogres. This man on the screen right now is supposed to be Mascherano. Does that look like Mascherano to you? This guy was supposed to be Marcelo. Come on now. The engine was meant to help the game, however it actually slowly destroyed it. The graphics were subpar, the gameplay was clunky, choppy, and unattractive. For example, there will be some stutter in the, in the certain sections of the game. I remember the early updates for this game, you weren't even able to score from outside of the box. And if you missed a shot, the game will slightly stutter for a small second. There were so many other glitches in the game that just made it unplayable, and the game felt incomplete. Although the ratings say otherwise, if you owned the game, you'd know it was trash. The game was followed by PES 2015 and PES 2016. PES 2015 received a lot of accolades winning some awards, and PES 2016 was a decent game. PES had improved modes like Master League and introduced my club in PES 2015 as a proper competitor for FIFA's ultimate team. FIFA 15 and FIFA 16 were decent games, this is where the fall for FIFA began. EA Sports were always about the money, but it became more and more evident. PES 2017 was a very good game, and this was the beginning of FIFA players switching to PES. PES is slowly but surely coming back to the top of the football games. Ever since the switch from the FIFA engine to the Frostbite engine, FIFA has slowly began to decline. There are some major glitches and the game was also unable to implement some realistic features, thus causing havoc to them to rely on scripting and as well as failed modes such as The Journey and Volta. Konami has slowly started creeping back in the race as a king of football games. The FIFA community despises all of EA Sports brand managers and EA Sports itself and anything that the game fails to accomplish. The PES community is much better, but that doesn't mean they're not toxic. 
I'm going to go a little bit off topic here, but just to get things cleared, I'm not here to say PES games are gaming masterpieces by any chance. Most of the games that were released after 2014 still have flaws that, have been, that haven't been fixed since PES 2014. This includes unresponsive players, Superman goalkeepers, and animations that negatively affect the way we play. Members of the PES community let out their thoughts in multiple forum sites like Twitter and Reddit and voiced the anger and concerns. However, there are some members in the community that are satisfied with the game being average as long as it's one up in FIFA. Most of the common statements I hear is, well, at least PES is better than FIFA. And I'm like, okay, PES players shouldn't be comfortable and complacent with the game that did better than the bare minimum. Imagine you're taking an exam, right? Just imagine this. Imagine you're taking an exam in the school, right? And you get a 40 out of 100. This is a really important exam. But the girl that made fun of you last week got a 27 out of 100 in her exam. And you're like, well, at least I did better than her. No. You both have to improve. You both have to study. It's still a bad grade. It doesn't matter that you did better than her. Basically, what I'm saying is that just because PES may be a better game than FIFA doesn't mean that the game is good. A lot of people may not realize this, and that is one of the main reasons why we, the game isn't improving. Sorry that I might have gotten a little bit out of topic, however I do feel like these statements needed to be said. Back to the future. PES has slowly been improving its game and of course with PES 2021 being the season updates, most PES fans including myself have to wait for what Konami holds for PES 2022. Konami has changed their engine once again, this time to the Unreal Engine, and according to some rumors they've been developing PES 2022 for the last 3 years. And if you think about it. Messi's face in PES 2022 is almost identical to his face in PES 2017 when it comes to looks obviously, not graphics. If PES can manage to fix some of the gameplay errors, add some modes and listen to his community and create a proper foundation for the PES games for the future, just like they did with PES 2003, or sorry, just like they did with PES 3, the game will definitely be up there as one of the greats. If you enjoyed this video or you're new to the channel, please comment, like, and subscribe. I will be making more content like this, maybe speaking on how like Konami can brew PES 2022 or something. Maybe have like a wishlist kind of video or something like that. Let me know in the comments down below. Maybe pitch some ideas. Um, if you're new here, I also have a PES 2020 Burnley Master League. I would love for you guys to check it out. And I also plan on starting the new Cats and Subaza Rise and New Champions a playthrough and that's in my channel also. I also plan on playing some old games, obscure and underrated football games, and as well as some games with football traits. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, that's it. That's all for today. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.